I don't know, the manager, listen, even the manager, when I hear the manager speaking, uh, we've never been a club to air our dirty laundry in public. The guy's talking about details that should be kept within the club. Oh, I tried to tell him the, the ball to buy this player, that player. So, to, talk to the ball, don't talk to the public about that type of stuff. Or if you're going to talk about that, when you've left the place and you've severed ties with the club, maybe that's when you want to talk about it. Fine, I understand that maybe. You can get a few things off your chest. You're still there working within the club. And you're airing dirty laundry out. Oh, I tried to hold him to sign these three players. Oh, Diaz at Liverpool is now flying. It makes him look a bit better and just takes the, takes the, the responsibility off his shoulders maybe. I don't think it's right what he's doing. Don't speak, yeah, you're disappointed or things could have been dealt with differently. Speak about that and iron that out at the club. And then when you've gone, then you can say your, say your piece, maybe. Uh, look, I, I really want to do this reaction video based on those comments there from Rio Ferdinand over on his channel five. The, the link to the full video is in the description. But Rio Ferdinand there massively disagreeing with Ralph Rannick's approach to call out Manchester United's board and Manchester United's owners, the Glazers, effectively, they are the board, in public, he will prefer it to be kept behind closed doors. Let's let's get straight into it. Let's not mess about here because right now, that's all United are doing is messing about on the pitch. But I'll be completely honest, Rio. I disagree with that sentiment entirely. I think now is the time where things like this, they have to happen. Radnick there, of course, he, he called out. He said, look... I told the board to sign an attacker. I named, who did he name? Luis Diaz. He named um, Julian Alvarez, who of course has joined City, and, and Dusan Vlahovic, who of course has joined Fiorentina. And I don't think Vlahovic was ever coming. I think Alvarez is a bit of an unknown entity. Luis Diaz, we were linked with. Uh, you know, it would have been, I've said there, look, it goes without saying that if we had a bit of foresight with Ten Hag coming in, we could have made that signing in January. And you've seen by uh, Kulilevsky at, at Spurs, and you've seen by... Diaz at Liverpool, the impact that, that the right January signing can have on your club. Hell, we, we saw it with Bruno Fernandes a couple of years ago. But Rio Ferdinand there is basically, in my opinion, I think he's focusing on the, on the nostalgic things that United used to do so, so well. Our doors used to be watertight at Manchester United. When Rio was there, when Rio was part of that team, he's seen United working flawlessly. And he's basing that and drawing that on his own experiences of what has worked at United before. And therefore, by logic, and it's fair enough, what should work now? But the fact of the matter is, is that the context and circumstances are so different at the club now that the idea that Ralph Rannick can keep it all behind closed doors and it can work and, and bring change, I don't think it's possible. And I think we have to remember here, if we rewind to December... This was after Ralph Rannick's second game in charge. I want to play a little clip here because I think there's something that has to be said. You've mentioned that a couple of times, body language. What was wrong with the body language? Yes, of course, some of our players are technical players and uh, today there was not so much space for technical solutions. And then you need to, yeah, to need, you need to be physically brave and, and, more, and, and, and compete on that kind of level uh, with regard to physicality. And this, uh, this was uh, something that we didn't do on all positions. So, uh now, the reason I'm putting that clip up there is because that's, what, his second game in charge after about a week of being Manchester United's manager. Ralph Rannick, at the start of his United tenure, was gentle in his approach. His approach to the media was not the approach we're seeing now. And what, we, what we're seeing now is the consequence of five to six months of effectively being ignored. ignored of effectively his, his, his gentler approach, simply not bringing the sort of changes at Manchester United that were needed. So that's why I would completely, I would honestly completely disagree with what Rio had to say here on, on five. Normally, I agree with Rio. I think Rio speaks a lot of sense. But in this one, I think a bit like Gary Neville here, talking about the proper United way, 4-4-2 with the aggressive style. Again, Based on nostalgia, it's based on what Manchester United used to do brilliantly. Manchester United back in the day. And they kind of sound like grumpy old men speaking about how things were better back in my day. And that's just the truth. United were, back, were much better back in their days. But we need it aired in public. We need this from Ralph Rannick. We need Ralph Rannick to be the sort of, I suppose, the full guy. For United fans, he, he speaks more like a fan than he does like a manager. And judging by his performances as manager, as I can see, well, maybe we'd be equally as effective with these players. Maybe we wouldn't be. But 
I just don't personally feel that it would help Manchester United as a football club move forward have we just been keeping this behind the scenes? I think Ralph has tried that. Ralph has tried that, tried that so much behind closed doors. And if he's getting ignored and he's getting pelted in public, you could argue that this is um, a self-preservation mode. That's what Rio says there. He goes, look, he's just doing this, not solely, but to make himself look better, to sort of shift responsibility away from him towards the, the, the owners and the board. But Rio, that's what has to be done. That's the sort of spotlight that we do need. And that's why Jose Mourinho was right when he did it back in the day. But at that point in time, United were unwilling to change. Right during the Woodward era, that was never going to change. Uh, and it went down in... A, I've, I've spoken about the malice uh, with Mourinho compared to Ralph Rannick and the way that Ralph approaches it and why it's different. And I've run into the nuances of that in quite a few videos. I don't really feel like I have to explain that much anymore. But I, did, I sent this tweet, right, after the game... Seven o'clock on Saturday night. I said, Rannick has been the best thing to happen to this club in a long time. He's put a spotlight on all the rot. He's called every player out. He's called the board out. He's not left a stone unturned. He has forced change. And if you want to focus on the results in the short term, you can go ahead. And I absolutely stand by every single word I said in that comment there. And that's why I personally have to disagree with what Rio Ferdinand is saying here and saying, look, just keep it all behind closed doors. It's like Rio, man, like it hasn't worked. It hasn't changed. And I don't, uh, for the, obviously I can't prove this. And this is just an assumption. This is just based on a gut instinct. I really think that if Ralph hadn't have been as vocal in these last few weeks, and as I, as I showed to you here, and as I've explained to you throughout this video, this is an approach that Ralph has had since day one. If everybody had listened and, to him as a consultant and actually taking it all on board and we all headed in that direction. I doubt very much we would, we would be seeing a Ralph Rannick chain, the, the, the Ralph Rannick that we're seeing now, the Ralph Rannick that is coming out and saying things like this, the Ralph Rannick that is calling out the board because they haven't listened to him. If you're supposed to bring in a consultant, what are you supposed to do? Listen to him. And it, and it does fill me with fear about what's coming next. But I just personally feel that if Rannick hadn't have had this approach and this change of approach in recent weeks. I think we will be worse off because of it. Now, as I said, you can really focus. And that's something I was really, I feel really strongly about. I feel like I'm still going to get into arguments about it across the course of the summer with plenty of United fans. And no doubt we'll speak about it on the podcast, which has been recorded later today. But I can overlook these short-term deficiencies with the football because I think Ralph Rannick truly at his heart probably wants what, more what Manchester United fans do than any other manager before him. Maybe not with, maybe, maybe Sol, man, that's wrong with Solskjaer, but Solskjaer didn't have the ability to bring the change we needed either. Mourinho didn't, even if, as I said, he's coming from a different perspective and Van Howe was the first manager, to, well, post Moyes, to try and deal with what was going on. We've been an absolute clusterfuck as a football club. And I don't think that being polite and keeping things behind closed doors and dealing things, how a football club should be dealing with it. Rio is not wrong in what he's saying. It should be kept behind closed doors. It absolutely should. And Manchester United, as a professional football club, should be doing that. We're incapable of doing that. There's so much rot behind the scenes, behind the doors, that keeping it there suits them. Bringing it to the public eye doesn't suit them. The spotlight becomes more and more intense. And that's why I personally think that everything he's doing at the moment, I stand by it. And there was also a second little clip, a second little comment from Rio Ferdinand, which for me stood out from that latest episode of Five, which, by the way, the link is in the description. So make sure you go and watch it all. It's good to hear what Rio has to say. You're not, I see fans shout and you're not fit to wear the shirt. Imagine being in that change room and a man shouting, and you're not fit to wear the shirt. What your pride will be saying right now. Mad. Rio Ferdinand, under, Rio Ferdinand has a, <laughs> a far, far bigger sense of pride than so many of these Manchester United fans. They probably look at this and go, you know what, we're not going to be here next season. Why have we got to deal with the mess that's here? They're checked out. They checked out a long time ago. They checked out before the Leicester game, the Everton game, the Liverpool game, the Arsenal game. Oh, they came back for a draw against Chelsea. Brilliant. Brentford game. Look how good we are. Brighton, boom. 4-0. Humiliation. Probably worse than the Watford one. Arguably just as bad. I mean, I'm not going to have that argument about which was more shit because they were both terrible. But I just think for me personally here, with what Rio's had to say, I think he's gone a little bit wide of the mark. 
I don't think he's right in saying on this, as I said, on this episode here, that we shouldn't be airing it in, in, in public. Not right. We shouldn't be as a football club, but right now that helps Manchester United more, in my opinion, than keeping it behind closed doors. It forces it into the spotlight. It changes the narrative. It takes a little bit of power away from the board because as we've seen from Ralph since day one, here when he's speaking so openly, so honestly about the tactics he's using, about the body language, about things that are right and things that are wrong with the whole playing squad, that was the refreshing honesty we, we needed. And he's, ha he's had that same approach with the board and neither of them have really listened to him. So I'm all for it. I think Ralph, I stand by the fact that Ralph is the best thing that's happened to this club in a long, long time. And I think that maybe he's not going to directly force the changes, but he's, he's part of a shift in direction and a shift in narrative and a shift in focus that I think can take this club a little bit further forward than we have been in 10 years of decline. If you let me know what you think about everything in the comments below. Do you agree with Rio Ferdinand? I'm sure you will let me know in the comments. Take it easy, everyone.